Go. Piviet class. My name is Jack on this very day, much like this, in 1892, God approached a man named Gregory Rasputin and told him to go all the way to St. Petersburg to heal the Tsar's son who was going through hemophilia at the time. So Rasputin left and went to the Tsar and said, I have mystical powers given from God. I can heal your son in no time. And the Tsar said, okay. And Rasputin healed his son, Alexei, and this shocked the palace. They were like, this guy has mystical powers. We need him in government. And uh, he was number two. They were so grateful he became head dog and he was a heavy influence on the empire. Now, uh, you know, when he spends a lot of time with the Tsar, you tend to spend a lot of time with the Tsarist. And if you know what I mean, then you know it, the public isn't going to like that. They're not going to like it. All right, Rasputin, he stood tall, 6'4", dark, long brown hair, very weird looking man, beard, raggedy, all the way to the net, uh, big nose, pushy eyebrows, and bloodshot eyes. People think he's the Antichrist. He could be the Antichrist. That's what the public thinks. And in 1914, God came back to Rasputin and told him, you must go back to Siberia, to your village. You are needed there. So Rasputin goes all the way back to Siberia, to his home, and sees this noseless woman, uh, like, sitting outside his home. He approaches her with the intent of speaking about God, and the woman, the noseless woman, just stabs him. And Rasputin's like, why would you do this? I'm talking to you about God. And the woman is like, you are Antichrist. You die. And legend has it, she sticks her whole hand in there like, oh my gosh. And it gets nasty. And then she leaves. And Rasputin's taken to a hospital where he is treated for a couple months. And he has nowhere to go. He feels like he's abandoned. He was just stabbed. He's alone. Now... This local po uh, a f politician named Felix invites him over to a dinner. And at that dinner, he is served with this whole platter of turkey laced with potassium cyanide. Now, uh, Rasputin eats this whole thing and, and just goes, mm, I love this. And Felix, he's like, how is he not dead? I'm going to go ask him about some vodka. And just goes, yeah, let's go to the cellar and get some vodka. So... Rasputin goes to the cellar, turns around to Felix, and sees that Felix has a gun pointed at him, right in the head. And Rasputin gives him the stare of all stares, and, and boom, bow, right in the forehead. He leaves to go party, and he feels this dread. Like, what if he's not dead? What if he's not dead? And goes back to the body, to the crime scene, and, and sees him. And all of a sudden, Rasputin lunges at him. This terrifies Felix, and Felix faints almost immediately. And, and, and Rasputin's just like, we need to get out of here. And is stumbling off the, to the street five blocks away. Felix wakes up, goes, bow, 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 and shoots him like seven times in the back. Oh my God, Rasputin falls to the floor. And Felix takes him into the trunk, to, takes him to a local bridge, ye yeets him all the way down. And you think that's the end of Rasputin, but no. The next morning, they check out the body. He was trying to get out of the ice. He, was, he wasn't he was dead. He had a bullet in his brain and nothing was stopping him. He drowned. He didn't die from the bullet wounds. He didn't die from the poison. He drowned. And this shocked the country. This shocked, this shocked everyone. And it shocked me. Thank you, everyone. De los baños. Dos de